The Ad Show. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing 19 questions tag. Unfortunately, I didn't actually tag anyone at the end of the video. This was because I was too immersed in talking about myself. Yes, this is a very long video. I apologize, but I don't really care. Also, there's a philosophical rant about halfway through that you may want to skip. I'll see you in the next part. Just realized I still forgot to tag people, even in that intro that I did specifically to tag people. I tag Nick Hills and Steve Green. Cheers. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today we have got a tag video and I very much like doing these tag videos. So uh, no one was tagging me and I thought, oh my God, I've got, to, I've got to do this video. So I've just tagged myself and copped out really, haven't I? It's a bit of a cop out that, isn't it? But uh, Tracy did kind of verify that I was okay to do this video and kind of semi-tagged me in the live stream last night on Thursday Talks. Quick plug, if you haven't checked out Thursday Talks, it's a little Thursday talk show. Thursday, it's a little Thursday talk show that I do at um, 6.45 p.m. on a Thursday. Pretty much every week, there might be the odd week, the rare week, the rare occasion in which I miss one. Um, but yeah, interesting little show. We talk a little bit about reselling. We talk a little bit about life. We have a bit of a chat with each other in the... Ch we have a bit of a chat with each other in the chat. Oh, I really should stop saying that. I always say that. But, you know, we just get involved. We're a bit of a family kind of thing, and it's quite nice. So uh, if you want to get a go up there... You know, 6.45 on a Thursday, pop over on, on this channel, of course. So, yeah, with that being said, we're going to get on with this tag video now. This is the 19 questions tag. I think it was started by David M, the car boot picker, and then he passed it on to Tracy, first of all. So, there are 19 questions. You do know I have a tendency to ramble, but I am going to answer in one word or one sentence answers where I can, because otherwise it would take forever. There are a few questions here that are simply just kind of one word, uh, one word answers, so that's pretty decent. Anyway, first off, question one, what does your channel name mean? My channel name is just um, my, my nickname, essentially, that was brought about in high school. A few people started calling me ads in high school, and then slowly... As it progressed on to sort of the end of high school, a lot of people then knew me as ads. And then in college, it, it was just everyone knew me as ads as well. Because I, I went to college with a fair few of my high school friends as well as other new people. But, you know, it just got around that then I was ads. And then a lot of people call me, called me ads from there. And then naturally a progression when I was setting up my business. And obviously, well, not necessarily setting up my business, but setting up the YouTube channel for my reselling business. Naturally, I kind of thought, oh, I'll brand it that although i didn't brand it that for quite a while this channel was originally called make money online because i had this channel you know a couple of years before i was reselling to do making money online in other ways than ebay or amazon so it was originally called that but then i branded it i think first off i might have called it adam robinson and that, I think I called it Adam Robinson first, then it was Ads Resells, then it was Ads Robinson. Or was it Adam Robinson, then Ads Robinson, then Ads Resells, then I went back to Ads Robinson. Yeah, it was something like that anyway. But I've changed the channel name quite a few times, um, and that's what it means. It's just my nickname. It's not my real name or anything. You could kind of say it's my brand name or my persona name or whatever you want. I don't know, something like that. That would do it the best justice, I think. Um, but yeah, that's that one. So, number two, where were you born? I can't remember which hospital it was, either Macclesfield or it was Leighton. 90% certain it was Leighton, so it's probably Leighton. That is in the northwest of the UK, and yeah, that's about it for that one. I don't think there's anything else to say for that one. Number three, where are you now? I wasn't quite sure what this question meant. I'm assuming it means where are you now within the realm of your business. I kind of also thought maybe it means where are you now in the physical location you're at. So, you know, if it, it might be me just getting that completely wrong. But where I am now physically is in a chair in a house in the northwest of the UK on planet Earth. So that's that one answered if that's the way you want me to answer it. But where I am now in my business, I've been doing this for four and a half years. I set up my business in July of 2015. So, well, four years, five months or whatever it is now. And, um... Yeah, I sell antiques and collectibles, I sell toys, I sell the odd video games. Um, this year hasn't been particularly brilliant, if I'm being honest, about where I am now. Uh, summer was atrocious for me. I know it was quite bad for a lot of resellers. Q4, it hasn't been bad. It hasn't been terrible. Um, I did... Uh, last few days have been really good. Prior to that, it was a bit choppy, you know, early December, maybe even, I don't yeah, let's start maybe 8th, 9th as well. We're now on the 13th, but the last few days in particular have picked up, and today I've done, we're on 10.59 in the morning. I think I've done about 100 and odd, 120 or something on eBay. Um, I think I've got 
15 quid on Amazon. Yesterday I did about 260 or something ridiculous, or 240. The day before I did over 200. The day before that I did about 100 and odd, so it's okay, it's okay. I don't think it's as good as last year. Obviously, I'm going to have to look in January at my December figures and stuff. I don't really know. I don't think it is. Um, but, yeah, it's okay. It's not doing too bad Q4, so I can't really complain too much. But, as I say, summer was pretty slow. So, where I am now in terms of my business, a little bit mixed, you know, partially positive, partially negative because of this year, really. But that's just how it is, and I know it's been a slog for a lot of people this year. It's not just myself. So, anyway, that's that one. What would your parents have named you if you were the opposite sex? Elizabeth. However, if I was to name myself in the opposite sex, I would probably go for something like Carmen. I think Carmen... It, it fits me quite well. You always think of Carmen. There's always a little bit of, of darkness to the name Carmen. When you when it comes off your lips, you always see a slight little bit hint of blackness, don't you, with that name. Carmen is also, uh, when you meet, let's say, a Carmen, and this is, of course, me just stereotyping an idea based on a conception of a name here, but this is what I see when I see the name Carmen in my mind. I see a little touch of eccentricity. A little bit of uh, aloofness, wildness, um, also a little bit of manipulation, a little bit of, you know, uh, seductiveness as well. An, an enigma, a bit of an enigma also. An introvert, most definitely. Um, someone who isn't necessarily incredibly integrated with the social aspects of life, but is incredibly intelligent, is... Very uh, mysterious, unique, mystical, spiritual almost. Um, and almost even a little bit of a touch gothy in there as well. A little bit of a goth there. Um, but not too much, not overbearing, but a little bit. And so if I was to translate myself into a woman, into the name of a woman, especially with that kind of little hint of evil that sometimes I possess, that little bit of, um, also that little bit of spontaneity and aloofness as well and, and creativeness and stuff like that, I would have to pinpoint myself as a Carmen. Elizabeth is too prim and proper, to, and I know that many people will agree with this, I'm not an Elizabeth, I, it's too prim and proper, it's too all lovely, airy, fairy kind of name, you know. You know, when you shorten it to Liz, it's a very nice name, and Elizabeth itself is a very nice name, but it's not indicative of who I am. As I say, if you shorten it to Liz, maybe a bit more kind of freer and a bit more embracing of who I am, but it's still not particularly who I am. It doesn't fit, but it seems on a little bit of detailed inspection on this kind of question that Carmen would be probably about right for me. There's other names that I could kind of inspect and think, yes, that embodies what I'm about, but certainly just in um, a brief moment before this video, I was thinking about this question, I thought, Carmen, yeah, Carmen does seem to suit it. just popped into my mind as usual, this thought, and uh, yeah, and, and thought Carmen. So Carmen there, so, well, Elizabeth, but Carmen as well for myself. Five, what is your eye color? Shall we have a look? Let's have a look here. I would say those are dark brown. What would you say? You can't have black eyes, can you? So I'm going to go dark brown, although they are almost going to black, aren't they? That's the little hint of evil that I have in my eye. You know, there, look, see. Hey, I winked. Hey, I normally can't wink. Oh, that's brilliant. I can normally not wink. It normally turns into a weird blink thing. But yeah, I, I just winked then. But yeah, that's the evil in my eye coming through. Any, anyway, that's a little evil wink coming through. It's, it, it's caught you there. Anyway, next one. What's your favourite candle scent? Well, I have to admit, and Tracy's not going to like this, I am a sucker for a little bit of lavender. I do like lavender. I've always liked lavender. I remember, and I know why I like lavender, because every year my grandma would grow lavender, and she doesn't do it anymore, I don't think, and it's a shame. And, and this is the nature and the, and the melancholy feeling of growing up, and uh, it's something that I, I, I incredibly get a lot of passion and richness out of analysing the human experience in the form of stages, like Jung did in Stages of Life. And I, but I, I do it to an incredible amount of detail. I, I, I see 
the emotions in every single element and I, I, I see them in all these different activities that are done in relationship to the next stage of life that we are going into. So when I look back, I can see that melancholy attitude of me going out to the garden with my grandma in my younger years, picking that lavender, bunching it up, know it, remembering that my grandma would put it on, on the countertop in the utility room she has and it would all be laid out there and the smell and the aroma and, and, and I never knew at that point that of course I have to grow up but I know, you, you, nobody does at that point when you're a child you don't know you have to grow up you have to progress and then it's when you do progress and randomly just when you're 26 years old or whatever it may be you look back and you, you, you have this fond yet also melancholy feeling of, you know, why did that have to end? Why, why, why was that, why was that beauty kind of almost happily, it's almost a naturally stripped away, but it is stripped away nonetheless, but it is a natural process growing up and it's a beautiful process, but you look back and you, you, you're, you have that fondness, but you also have this sense of, I wish I immersed myself more in that in the moment in some aspects there was a lot in my childhood that I did immerse myself in and I'm, I'm grateful to myself now that I did that or I'm grateful to my past self that I did that you know now and I can look back with fondness and so my love of lavender comes from that and that's why I, I like lavender um, but also uh, my friends have got candles more recently and uh, they've had uh, Possibly honeycomb. I think I've had honeycomb quite like that one. Actually, I was um, I was next to a candle in their room the other day, and it was a oh what was it? Jas jasmine and something. I think it was, and that one was quite nice. And also, I think I've had an orange blossom one as well, which seemed to be okay. So yeah, I, I think that's it. I, I'm not a candle guy really, but uh, yeah, that's what I'd say for those, just based on my experience. Number seven, can you cook? depends what you define cooking as um but i don't generally do that many well i don't do the only thing i do in a microwave is a jacket potato because it takes two i know it's nicer in the oven and stuff and occasionally uh let's say if i'm having it for evening di dinner or as i call it tea um obviously uh, I, I might put it in the oven but if i'm having it as a lunch you know in the middle of the day and i'm getting on with stuff and things like that i whack it in the micro and that's pretty much the only thing i do in the micro i do have one packet meal pretty much only one packet meal and that are the, they are the veggie bakes from m s and i love them now obviously this isn't cooking what i'm describing here this is putting something in a microwave or quickly whacking a a, a prepped meal in the oven but there are things that i do that aren't cooking really or can't really be judged as, as any level of cooking but also I you know I chop veg up I chop uh, potatoes up I whack them in the steamer things like that and I cook in that way I have obviously I get things from the supermarket whether it be uh, vegetable meals you know vegetarian meals because obviously I am a vegetarian or I uh, immerse or I, I get some sort of main vegetarian meal and then what I'll do not meal but um, sort of main what I mean by this is corn pieces or something like that you know something like that and I'll get them and then I'll work them into a meal that I've made with you know other things and stuff like that rather than just doing them singularly on their own in the pan or wherever it may be so yeah so there's sort of for a lot of the time oh little Electra is coming down how are you doing little one? Oh no don't don't mess up me blooming thing one sec right go down little one go down you can't you you're right, little superstar, you, trying to get in the camera. Right, there we go, we're back on. But yes, yeah, so I'll work them in. So, for example, what I've done in the past is I've done what I call a vegetable medley, which is where I do potatoes, I do uh, peas, I do um, carrots and things like that. And I crush the potatoes and I put all the veg in. And I put some nice spices in it as well and things like that. Put a nice little bit of butter and stuff like that in there as well. And then put some corn pieces in, which I've already spiced. And then whack that all together. And it's a really simple but really nice little dish if you do it correctly um and so i do things like that and i'll do pasta and stuff although i don't cook my spa uh, cook 
I don't, no, no, I don't cook my pasta from scratch. I mean, I don't make my pasta from scratch, although I do want to start doing that at some point, even if it is just on occasion. But yeah, I do the pasta. I, uh, my favourite pasta is Fusilli. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, although I do like penne as well, and uh, I don't mind spaghetti and things like that. I mean, to be honest, I'll have any pasta. I do like those little, you know, those little ones that are like ribbons, where they've got, like, they're like that shape. Um... I don't know whether you can see that, but yeah, I like those little ribbons, I like them. I like any pasta, but it's just I've always gravitated back towards Fusilli. I just like it. I like the little twirly ones. So yeah, I'll do that, and I'll have a little pesto sauce with it, and I'll have some veg. I'll cook up some uh, sort of like um, stir-fried Mediterranean veg type thing, and I'll whack that in together, do a few, you know, tomatoes and stuff in that veg. and it, You know, really simple, very, very simple, but lovely. Put a few spices in that Mediterranean veg, normally paprika or possibly a little tiny bit of mild chilli powder or uh, what's the other one that I use? Cumin pepper or something. No, not cumin. What's it? Cayenne pepper, that's it, cayenne pepper. I somehow put a dash, but that is spicy, that one. So you just put a dash of that in. And then, you know, I, I what I do on my pasta is, um, I, I absolutely love pepper on pasta. I absolutely love it. So I do put quite a lot of pepper on, but I always do that after I've finished with it. Um, and I just probably, I don't put it in uh, while I'm cooking or anything. I sometimes put a bit of pasta, pasta uh, pepper uh, in the Mediterranean veg while I'm cooking, but I do love a good bit of pepper on the top. And also, if you get, you know, a nice, uh, nice uh, tub of pepper, um, it also gives it a little bit of a texture as well, the pepper on the pasta. The pasta obviously being quite soft, but there's a little bit of firmness there, because obviously you want that little bit of firmness, as you'll be aware, with, you know, making it al, al dente. But you also get those little hints of peppercorns and stuff, and it, it is nice, it is very nice texture. And so I do like that, um, and you know, I do all sorts of other stuff, but I'm rambling now, <laughs> I won't talk any more about that, but yeah, um, I, I can cook, I do cook, um, but I wouldn't say I am an incredible chef or anything like that, but I do cook. Eight, what is your sign? Aquarius, the water carrier. I won't go into that one because we all know that. Sixth of February is my birthday. Number nine, what scares you about getting old? Now, I had to think about this one. And it's a little bit negative, this. But the question implies that this is going to be a negative answer. Uh, and it's actually um, watching people get old and losing people. One by one, losing everyone I care about. And that, I mean, that's grounded within my own psychological health. I, I, I always, I've always feared uh, kind of people leaving me and things like that. And I think we all do to an extent, to a level, because the nature of life, unfortunately, if we're looking at it in a slightly more negative way, I, I personally am quite uh, positive in my, in my viewpoint on life and I have an incredible amount of positivity to say about life. But in this way of thinking, when we're looking at it a bit more negatively, everyone does leave us. Whether it's, we can stay together in a marriage for 60 years, but ultimately death will take us in the end and separate us. I mean, it's in the, is it not the marriage vows or something? Till death do us part, something like that. Um, which is actually absurd if you think about it, because really death, if we're saying that death is nothingness, let's just go with that viewpoint for the sake of argument, death is nothingness, we're going, we're both going into the same nothingness together, so death doesn't do us part, we just don't exist anymore, but we exist, we don't exist in the same non-existence, that's it, yeah, we don't exist in the same non-existence, so therefore, death doesn't do us part, so that's the most bizarre bloody saying of a wedding vows ever, anyway, but I get what it means, you know, the whole, your conscious awareness will be gone, and therefore, you know, you, you, you're a part in one regard, but anyway, um, but the nature of life is that, you know, it's separation, basically, and isolation as well, in one regard. You don't see it in the everyday life because you're surrounded by people you love and thing, you go into different events and things are happening and all the rest of it. But you have to live your life through yourself. You have this conscious awareness that is very isolated to yourself, inside yourself, essentially. And you have to live life through with that, alone, essentially, and, uh, and and so we all have that, we all have that fear of leaving, of things, get, you know, deteriorating and going and dying and all the rest of it, uh, but for me, it's been a prominent thing in my life, and um, I do kind of 
uh, think about that. I think about growing old and I think, well, my mum and dad, well, first off, my grandparents going, my mum and dad going, and then what if I outlive my friends or my friends and stuff and I'm just there left? Um, dying has been a, a, a funny one for me because obviously I like philosophy and I look into it. So I've looked into death more than anyone <laughs> ever looked into it. Well, I, feel, I feel like that. I feel like that's been the case for me. And so you become desensitised to it a little bit. Um, it's not to say that I'm not scared of death still, there is still a fundamental existential angst there, I suppose, um, like we all have, you know, even the most um, incredible person who's, who's almost got over the fear of death, there will still be some element, some little subtle idea of protecting self left, because by the very nature of you being uh, uh, having a body and being in this world, there is an element of that, no matter how small. But I, f I kind of have more of a faith in nature and a trust in the bodily process of death. In terms of that, I, if let's say I die of something like old age or something like that, or, or, or a certain thing that just slowly fades me out, let's say I'm in a hospital bed, uh, you know, I'll fade out over a few weeks and I won't remember the same things. I won't, I won't really all be there in my mental state. And that is a, a, a gift of nature. That not being all there in your final days because you've not got the energy to produce your mentality and produce your kind of uh, all of who you are essentially anymore. That is a gift because it allows you to settle into death. And, uh, and so I don't really feel too bad about that anymore because I'm thinking, well, it'll just settle down into death. Now, of course, if we're to say that I would be surprised by death, that would be another thing. Like you, you go in a car and then you buy, for some reason you get thrown off into a river, thrown off a bridge into a river and you can't open your windows and you're doing this and then water's coming in and it's going up and it's going up and you're panicking. You're like, oh, 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 you know, and that, now that would scare me to hell. That would scare me to hell. But then you fade out and then you're dead and everything's okay again. Because you see, what you've got to also look at in death is death is salvation. Most people don't look at it like that. Death is the solution to the problem of life, I might say. In which we're all here saying, oh, oh, there's this bad thing happening in my life. There's this bad thing happening in my life. Oh, God, well, this terrible thing with this thing with this. And then in the very nature of death, any problem that, that's occurred in your life, gone. And, it's, uh, and, and there's bliss again. Because in the unconscious, in, uh, in nothingness, there can only be bliss. Because... There is no one to experience suffering. There's no self to experience any level of um, suffering that, that, that could come on you as a being in existence. And therefore, uh, unconsciousness is bliss. I mean, you think about it when you're sleeping as well. How nice it is just to sleep and just be in this kind of unconscious realm. It's very nice. It's very nice. And, and so there's a there's a bliss there without there being even a bliss there because uh, there isn't anything there but seemingly it is bliss just by its very nature, just by it being there, being a thing, by nothingness being there. It, it creates this idea of bliss when we become in consciousness again. Um, because when we come to our consciousness, when we come to our sen senses after sleep, you think, for the most part, you think, oh, that was a nice sleep. Or you get up and you, f you feel refreshed. You, know, you might not think that, but you get up and you get on with your day and you just feel quite refreshed from it. And so you then see the bliss. You see the conscious bliss in relation to the unconscious. And so when you think like that and you think that this, you know, that's what's going to happen, that's all that's going to happen, is you're just going to fade into this unconscious uh, arena in which you can't experience and you've got this kind of just general thing that's that's there essentially this nothingness you mean oh that's not too bad and then okay maybe death lasts forever it's not my personal contention that death lasts forever but uh maybe death lasts forever or maybe one day uh after God knows how long of, of nothingness. We can't even say time is relative in nothingness because it's just time doesn't even exist in, in nothingness, I would say. 
But after this period, you may just wake up again as another baby or something like that. And then you don't remember your last life because you've not got a brain to experience a last life. And you enjoy this new life that is uh, you're absorbing in and, and all the terrors of it and all the heartache and everything. And you get closer to death and old age and everything's creeping up and it's all going wrong and everything's getting more and more scary and people are dying on you and and you're getting illness and then you fall into the unconscious bliss of death again in which all the problems are erased completely only to be started again at some point in the future so that's what I would say for that question anyway. What is the last thing you bought? I bought some Ralph Lauren clothing. So that's that one pretty quick. Uh, Ralph Lauren t-shirt for a uh, Christmas present. What is your favourite holiday? I don't really do holidays. So I can't really say what is my favourite holiday. Um, although I have been on holiday. You know, I've been quite a few holidays in the past. I would say a log cabin or a... Uh, I do like quite, I quite like the log cabin holiday, um, caravan holidays I quite like, I do enjoy those. So yeah, I'd say that. What is your guilty pleasure? Um, cheesy, late 80s pop music, Tiffany, uh, New Kids on the Block, things like that. Uh, I do enjoy that, That's my. I would say that's the only guilty pleasure I have. What show do you binge watch? We all know this one, Doctor Who, quite easy. Uh, I've watched it for... 15 years next year, 15 years next year, I've been a fan of Doctor Who, that's crazy, um, but yeah, I absolutely love it, I've always loved it, I love the fantasy element of it, ooh, your item sold, brilliant, 17 99 that'll do, yeah, so that's just Doctor Who, uh, what item do you never leave the house without, well, yeah, I'm recording with it, phone, terrible, I know, in this 21st century consumeristic culture, is consumeristic a word, I don't know, but I'm going to make it a word, in this 21st century consumeristic culture, we are all addicted to the phones, and I am no exception, but, so long as you embrace and absorb reality and nature to a fair, fair degree, and once in a while just put down your phone during the day, and just look around you and embrace what reality has to offer, just on a more basic, human, and primal level, then you've got nothing, there's nothing wrong with technology, it's just people think there is. It, the only reason people think there is things wrong with technology is because actually deep down inside themselves there's something wrong with themselves in their psychology, but actually it's not technology to blame at all, it's people projecting their problems externally on technology. In fact, if they were more introspective understanding of themselves and also just the natural world around them they would feel quite contented with technology and using it and being absorbed and embraced by it so yeah um that's the item that i don't leave the house without uh, 15 are you an evening person or a morning i am um i don't know a bit of both i yeah, i really am a bit of both because sometimes i get up and i'm like oh yeah i quite like this this morning and then sometimes i go to bed and i'm like oh yeah i quite like this 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 uh, more uh, this evening and then sometimes i get up and i'm like oh i don't like this this morning and then sometimes i go in the evening and get into bed and i'm like oh i don't like this this evening so i'm a bit of both um right then what is your favourite movie genre? Uh, I quite like sci-fi. I like family-oriented films. I'm a big sucker for films like that. I like... Uh, I don't know. I suppose it's Toy Story and Frozen and things like that. Kids movies. It's, it's just... It's the way I gravitate towards because, obviously, uh, one of my self-archetypes in Jungian psychology is the, the, the innocent archetype or the, chi the innocent child archetype. So, of course, I have a... And also the Joker as well. So, with those two archetypes being firmly within my conscious awareness and also within my unconscious, I always gravitate to the silly and the, the, the slightly um, innocent as well and, you know, the, the, the childish stuff. So, um, yeah, that's probably my favourite movie genre. Uh, what... Uh, good in your life right now friends uh emotional stability is good at the moment which is good because it's not always good is it you know sometimes your emotional stability can be a bit wavering um but emotional stability is good psychological health is a lot better than it was so that's good and and i would have to say that um i, I certainly wouldn't say discipline my discipline at the moment is terrible and uh, it, yeah so uh, my discipline isn't good but my, um, yeah, but friends and psychological health and emotional stability and things like that are pretty decent. As I've mentioned, my business is okay, so that's not too bad. 
Um, but it has been a bit up and down this year. So, so we're not too bad. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I am an INFJ type, which is an introverted, intuitive, feeling, judging type on the Myers-Briggs personality types. Uh, so that means that I am very much grounded in introversion. Uh, and you can see that quite obviously. I spend a lot of time in my room. Um, I generally like to recuperate by being alone in my room, watching a film or, um, I don't know, uh, just essentially being alone and and just well, reading as well reading is something I like so I'm very much that kind of INFJ type which kind of suits um, somewhat in some regard let's say if in the future I'd like to be a philosopher it somewhat aligns with that however really it should be an IN, uh, INFP type um, for a philosopher but still it's in that range it's still a decent um one to be certainly you know psychologist in that range is that's a good personality type to be within those kind of uh careers there um so yeah i'm an introvert what is your biggest accomplishment um i don't really know really i've had quite a few i mean the charity thing was brilliant and i know i've said many many times throughout the last few weeks but it wasn't entirely my achievement and it was down to a lot of other people that did it. And I don't want to take that away from other people who participated and made it what it was. But also just to answer this question, that was a huge achievement, both on my part and the part of everyone who joined me. Um, I think that doing the birthday challenges have been big achievements. So doing the 50,000 steps and 50 listings the other year and doing the 50 charity shops in a day. Those have been big achievements. I think probably my biggest... No, actually, I know one of my biggest achievement is understanding myself more. And while I wouldn't say that I've, I understand myself entirely, and I don't know whether anyone ever could understand themselves entirely, really, um, by nature of a being an unconscious, um, but, but understanding myself to a higher degree now and getting a, a better psychological and philosophical understanding of myself and also the world around me, I think that that has been my biggest achievement and it's been the most fun achievement i've ever done you know you know reading different things reading books and learning about these different things and learning about different angle and from learning about different things i've learned about different angles of myself and and um how to understand others as well and how to be more sympathetic and empathetic to others as well uh, from the things that I can see within my own self. So, yeah, I think that my biggest accomplishments would, would probably be that, actually. But also, there's been other ones more grounded in, um, I suppose, uh, a pursuit of a career or whatever it may be. So, yeah, so that's that one. So that is 19 questions, 33 minutes. Oh, my God, 33 minutes. That is incredible. We've done good here. I'm going to be the longest video. Um... I'm going to be the person who's done what, the longest video on this, and that'll be awesome. So, uh, thank you very much for joining me, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Whack a comment down below, you know the drill. Uh, like it if you did like it. Um, what's the other thing? Subscribe if you haven't already, and all the rest of it, you know. Comments down below, all that sort of stuff. So, I will uh, leave it there, guys, and I will see you in the next one. So, see you very soon, guys. Watch it, I'll slow down.